Hi there, it's Pastor Dave here, and uh, just to welcome you to this uh, online service this morning. As last week, we will be having um, uh, this, this YouTube video for our service, and then afterwards we will meet uh, on Facebook Live for our coffee time, and we can chat to each other on there. Um, we'll also be again this week doing a Tuesday night Zoom get-together, and uh, the Thursday night Facebook Live as well. So please... Uh, make every effort to stay connected and, and be involved in those and uh, if you need help with the technical stuff just as long as a text or an email or something and we'll try and help you with that but uh, for now we're going to just spend a little time in worship and then uh, we're, we're going to uh, get into some uh, inspirational stuff at least I hope it's going to inspire you and uh, I hope you enjoy this time with us so um, I'll see you in a little while and it's over to Russ and Shell.
Well, here we are again, and um, I've had a little bit of a decision to make about what we do with these times together, and um, really came to the conclusion that I, I don't want to keep talking about um, uh, viruses and behaving ourselves and um, trying to kind of pump up uh, faith to believe that God will help us. Uh, we believe those things, and uh, this is one of those times in life where the rubber hits the road, and uh, we've got to really find some security in our faith and, and believe what we believe. Um, but uh, what I want to do, and I think is a much better uh, idea, is to talk about Jesus, because the, the greater we get, the, the better we get our eyes fixed on him, the more confident we'll be, the more secure we'll feel, the more peaceful we'll feel. And so um, that's what I intend to do. And in order to uh, facilitate that, in order to help us to, to do that, um, I want us to be looking at Mark's Gospel, and uh, and uh, getting into some of the uh, things that he has to say about who Jesus is and how Jesus lived his life and the message that that all has for us. I want to just spend a few minutes to give a kind of introduction and um, uh, give you an idea really of, of uh, the backdrop to Mark's gospel. Uh, the word gospel, evangelion in the Greek, simply means glad tidings or, or good or joyful news that's what the gospel is we have four gospels in our bibles they're all about the joyful proclamation of the good news about jesus about who he is about what he did and about why he did it and how that touches our lives mark's gospel um, is the shortest of the four gospels um, luke and matthew both borrow from mark's gospel and uh, and you can see bits there uh, Mark sometimes gives more detail, actually, than, than Luke and Matthew, which is quite interesting. But um, uh, who is this Mark and, and what is he doing with this gospel? The gospel, uh, really, Mark writes at quite a pace. It's, it's quite a fast-paced, um, you know, uh, here's John the Baptist, oh, then here's Jesus, and uh, they're doing this and then they're doing that, and, and, and there's very little by way of um, introduction and uh, and. Um, you know, uh, easing our way into things. It's all kind of quite in your face and quite quick. Jesus appears and um, Mark wants us to see that this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. And actually that's quite uh, significant and important for us in these days as Jesus goes about his ministry of healing and deliverance and preaching the gospel. Um, it's quite clear that Mark is presenting us with a picture of the Saviour, uh, the Christ, the Messiah, the Saviour, the one who comes to uh, save uh, people from their sins, who comes to bring forgiveness, who comes to teach us how to live, and who exhibits all the signs that you would expect a Messiah to exhibit. And uh, it's good for us to see that because that will encourage us. You know, in in times of pressure, in times of struggle, it's often very difficult for us to fix our eyes on Jesus and understand just exactly who he is and, and to hold to the faith. And so these things will encourage us and will help us um, to, to do that. Uh, Mark presents, presents this wonderful picture of Jesus and, and Jesus' ministry and then all of a sudden we, we, we're kind of hit with this idea that actually uh, this Jesus is going to be persecuted, he's going to be hated by the the religious people of the day, that he's going to be um, uh, treated very badly and ultimately is going to have to give his life for the mission and will, will suffer a, a terrible death, the worst, worst possible um, death you could suffer for that time. So um, uh, this is going to be uh, quite a ride really through the life of Jesus that's going to have some highs and it's going to have some lows, it's going to have some bits where we'll be rejoicing, it's going to have some bits that are going to cause us some sorrow. Uh, but we have to go through all of these things to find balance and, and understand something about the Gospels. Uh, Gospels are not really biographies, they are a kind of a mixture of history and theology which are presented in, in in a way i mean as mark writes it's it's pretty much like he's preaching and it's it's presented to us almost as one uh, big sermon about who this jesus is because at, at its heart it's the proclamation of the good news about jesus and uh, mark mark um, wasn't one of the apostles so uh, mark had quite a close relationship with peter we see uh, in in the book of acts uh, his name turns up in one or two places. Um, John Mark is the is the name that you will see there, and he's not. Uh, John isn't. Uh, Mark isn't an apostle, but he's quite um, 
close with Peter. So he spends some time with Paul, but that doesn't work out and they fall out and, and, and Mark has to go and do something different. But, different, but um, uh, Barnabas uh, picks him up and, uh, and, and helps him. And uh, there's a, a growing relationship through all of that with the Apostle Peter. And so therefore, if we want to understand where the story has come from, the, the things that Mark presents to us, a lot of it will be from his conversations with the Apostle Peter, who of course was an eyewitness to many of these things. And uh, other bits will be the uh, things that he's gleaned from the other apostles and other eyewitnesses and, and uh, stories that they could trust through their um, oral tradition uh, and know that actually these are things that we ought to be understanding and reading about Jesus the Son of God. Um, so Mark presents us with this gospel. He, he, there's, there's nothing much by way of introduction. He just says, here it is. Here is the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Here it is, Jesus, the Son of God. Here, it's all here. Just come and read this and understand. And he presents us with uh, theological arguments and he presents us with uh, quite a big um, Christology, really, in his gospel, that he, that he wants us to see who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the one who comes to save us from our sins. He is the one who will be uh, with us in times of trouble and change our lives for the better and help us and walk with us and do all of those things. He wants us to get a really great picture of Jesus. So uh, let's get into it and let's actually get started on this gospel of Mark. So, Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, it says this, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness, and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Mark gets us straight away there into um, a, a really big Christological statement. He says this is the beginning of the gospel, the good news, the proclamation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And right from the outset, there's no messing about here. He wants us to see that this is no ordinary person that we're talking about, that this, uh, although he is completely human in the incarnation, that he is Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Son of God. And, uh, and this whole um, opening sequence just kind of draws our attention straight away to the fact that we are talking about the one and only Son of God here, the only uh, true God, that, that this Jesus, this Christ, this Messiah, this Son of God has come and we need to pay attention because this is God in the flesh. This is God come to do something big and significant amongst us. Um, he quotes the prophet Isaiah. Then Mark is quite influenced, really, throughout by the prophet Isaiah. But the version, the ver the verse that he uh, quotes there is actually a fusion of of probably three verses. One which is in Isaiah forty, but also something from Exodus and from Malachi. And he's wanting us to see again straight away that actually this is not just a random appearing of the Son of God. This is not just a random intervention by God. But actually this is an event which has been prophesied for thousands of years. This is a, an event which through the prophets God has spoken to us about and told us he's going to do this. Uh, that, that he's going to send Messiah. He's going to send the Christ. And that when the Christ comes everything is going to change. Everything is going to be different. And so just in those first two or three verses, Mark sets us up. He says, here he is. Here is the Christ. And he is the one who is prophesied, who we've been waiting for, who we've been looking to, who we've been expecting for so long. Here is that Christ. And he has come to us. Prophecy fulfilled. God keeping his promises. And, and you've got to kind of love the way that he gets straight into this. There's no, there's no introduction. There's just a John appeared. John the Baptist. John appeared. There he is. 
and he's suddenly there he is and he's in full view and he's baptizing people in the Jordan. Now, baptism was a fairly common feature in the New Testament. You might get baptized for all sorts of things, but there is something different about John's baptism. John's baptism is a preparation for the coming of Jesus, is a preparation for this whole new era that Jesus is about to usher in. And it's it's kind of it's a kind of a, a an all encompassing um, baptism. So m baptisms uh, in that era, uh, you could have been baptized for all sorts of things, baptized into a teacher and a certain teaching and all that kind of stuff. Here, John just flings the doors wide open, and here is a baptism for repentance and for the forgiveness of sins, the very things that keep us from God and hold us back in our relationship with Him. John is giving that baptism. He's inviting people to come to confess their sins, to be baptized and to receive forgiveness. And uh, what does it mean to repent? So quite simply, it means that actually we turn from our sinfulness, we turn from whatever it is we're doing that displeases God, anything we think or say or do that is an offense to God, we turn away from that and we stop doing that. And then we come to God for forgiveness. And God's forgiveness, of course, um, is all encompassing and certainly the the point of the gospel is that jesus comes to make that so that in the work of the cross as we will see later on that forgiveness is available for everything for everybody that whatever it is you have done or thought or said that has been an offense to god when you come in repentance and faith that can be forgiven and uh, baptism of course for us is something that now follows faith following the pattern in in acts uh, and so when we come to that place where we have repented of our sins and we've put our faith in Jesus and we receive forgiveness, we then get baptized as, a, as an outward sign of something that's happened on the inside, that we have actually on the inside, we know that something is new, something has changed, that we, are, we carry a conviction and a faith and we are born again because of it and as the Holy Spirit works in us. And so John um, sets us up nicely for the first appearance of Jesus. Um, uh, and so Mark um, writes to us, he says that this is the Son of God, this is the one who's prophesied, and then John is kind of his herald, his his forerunner. He's the one who's come to announce that Jesus is coming and, uh, and does so beautifully uh, by baptizing people in a baptism of repentance and receiving of forgiveness and setting them up ready to hear the gospel that will change their lives and indeed change our lives. And so here now comes Jesus as we get to verse 9, Mark chapter 1 verse 9. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. So it's a bit, you know, and here's John. And now here's Jesus. It's quite kind of sudden. There's no background. There's no real leading up to it. Uh, it's just Mark's gospel has this drive to it, which you don't find in the other gospels. And uh, and here we are. We're now, after this big build up. we're now face to face with Jesus. Um, Mark has, has set us up for this, talking about uh, the Christ, the Son of God. John the Baptist has set us up for this, talking about the one whose shoes he is not worthy to untie. And now here comes Jesus, and Jesus comes to John for baptism, which in a way doesn't make sense, because if John's baptism is a baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sins, and Jesus, of course, had no sin, he lived a sinless life, uh, why is Jesus coming to John for baptism? Well, uh, Mark doesn't tell us that, but we know from the other Gospels that Jesus comes to John the Baptist, for, to uh, the phrase is to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, this is the path that human beings, that all humans being human beings must take. They must come to God in repentance. They must come and receive forgiveness. They must put their faith in God. Uh, and specifically now they must put their faith in Jesus and then be baptized as a, as a, a display, as a proclamation to the world that actually something is different, something has changed. And and, uh, and it's all because of Jesus. And so Jesus is kind of leading a way for us. He's showing us the way, the way we should behave. He's setting the example. And uh, it's there 
for us to follow the message is we must come to god in repentance we must receive forgiveness we must put our faith in jesus and follow him and then you get this wonderful uh, thing happening as jesus is coming out of the water john is baptizing him and as jesus is coming out of the water mark says that the heavens are torn open and you get this great picture of the holy trinity you have uh, the father in heaven who is the voice speaking you have the holy spirit descending in, in the form of a dove upon jesus and of course you've got jesus the son of god in the water there being baptized and so jesus uh, you've got this great picture of the holy trinity that just kind of reinforces our trinitarian belief there the father son and holy spirit all in that wonderful picture all in the first few verses of mark's gospel that are there to to build faith in us and build expectation of god doing things as we come to him and of course the thing that god says uh, the father says over jesus is this is my son and i'm actually i'm really pleased with you now just bear in mind here that as god says that over jesus that at this point jesus has done nothing at this point he hasn't healed anybody at this point he hasn't preached he hasn't delivered anybody of demons he hasn't you know um set people straight and uh, or counseled anybody or any of that kind of thing he's not that he hasn't engaged in what we would describe as ministry at all at this point but but the father says to him i am really pleased now i want you to really get that because this says something to us about our value as well that actually you don't have to do anything for god to love you you don't have to be anything for god to love you god just he loves you and he values you and if we can understand that maybe that would help us to actually become better people uh, to be more secure to have a greater measure of faith to live a better life to to be more ardent in our following of jesus if we understood how much god loves us and, he, and then actually it's it's about position not performance that our position is that we are valued and loved by god and it has nothing to do with performance but actually if we understand that surely our performance surely our doing must become better must improve must actually our following must increase in some measure that that can be seen so this this is a kind of a this is a wonderful value statement from the father over jesus which he also speaks over you and i and had we the time we could delve into other parts in the scriptures that make that clear particularly if you've the time to read it psalm 139 will help you with all of that but then something happens that that actually uh, you don't expect to come next because here is jesus he's been baptized he's doing everything to 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 model things for us that that show us the way to behave and show us how we should live and the holy spirit drives him what does it say there drove him the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness into a desert experience so there's this kind of there's this real highlight there where jesus is baptized and the father speaks and the holy spirit comes but the first thing the holy spirit does is take him into something difficult he takes him into a dry and barren place where he is tempted and challenged by the devil and that is so often the case isn't it that actually you know we expect everything sometimes to be a joy-filled ride but actually god forms things in us he shapes us by taking us through difficult circumstances and and we should not be surprised particularly after something brilliant has happened if we then face a real challenge because that's what god uses to shape things in us that's what god uses to change us into something bigger something better something greater and so uh, this is what's happening with jesus here god takes him out into the into the desert not that jesus needs reshaping but actually the the test in the desert is the proof that he doesn't need reshaping because as satan has a go at him jesus comes out with flying colors he's not at all disturbed or dismayed or distracted by that he just deals with it because he already has that godness uh, within him he, he already has that shaping within him for you and i there's still a bit of a journey to be had there and so we mustn't be surprised if god takes us through difficult times to shape things in us and i love the fact that in the middle of the difficulties in the middle of the testing and and, and everything else uh, mark says to us that the angels were ministering to him 
because God never leaves us alone in difficult moments. God never leaves us alone in trials. God is always there with us, ministering to us, whether we see him and recognize it or not. But God is always there with us, helping us and sustaining us and giving us wisdom so that we can come through the trials and tribulations better people, better shaped, more shaped like Jesus and, and better prepared and better uh, uh, equipped for the rest of our lives to follow him. So I hope that encourages you and I hope it challenges you this morning. So that concludes um, our online service this morning. Thank you for joining us. Listen, it's really important to stay safe, to follow uh, the government's guidelines on staying safe. It's really important to stay connected. So uh, be, be connecting with us on Facebook and over Zoom and all of the things that we've got set up that's going on. Uh, you'll be getting emails about all of that with links so that you can engage with that. So stay safe, stay connected and be at peace. Be at peace because God is with us. God is here. God is going to help us through this. He's going to see us through and out the other side because that's who he is and because he loves us. So I'm just going to close our time together for this section um, by praying for us. And then as soon as we've finished uh, the video, we're going to be over on Facebook Live for coffee time uh, at the Haven. And um, uh, you'll be seeing uh, either me or Sue uh, or Russ or Shell. I can't remember who it is this week, but you'll be seeing us uh, over on Facebook. And it's an opportunity just to message in and interact and uh, you know, do the things that we would probably normally do when we're having coffee after a service. So let me pray for you and we'll close. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters uh, in the church here. I pray for this community that as we go through this difficult season, that we would know your presence, not that just we would know it by faith, but that we would experience it day by day, that we would have just a sense within ourselves that you are here, that you are helping, that you are doing things to take us through this and bring us through the other side. I pray that you would uh, touch all of those who are feeling ill uh, at, at any level. Uh, Lord, For uh, particularly for some of the older folks uh, in our congregation who might not be too well, um, who might be feeling a bit off, I pray that you would just give them a special blessing. We pray for uh, those who are going through um, all sorts of treatments and everything else that's going on in the church. Lord, that you would bless them and that each one would have a fresh sense of your presence and your love for them today as, as we are uh, communing together with this, with this prayer. And I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you, that he would draw close to you, that he would show you his favour. That means that you would get stuff that you don't deserve just because God loves you, that he would show you his favour and that he, as he draws close to you, would give you his peace, that supernatural peace that can only come from him. I pray that you would receive that in your head and in your heart, in your spirit, uh, in your body, that you would be at rest and in a place of trust and faith in God because you know that he loves you, because you know that he will not leave you or forsake you, because you know that he is going to do everything to uh, help you to feel and stay in that place of blessing. So I pray that you be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. See you over on Facebook Live.